Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Angelo. As some of you may have heard a couple days ago as of this recording, Adobe has released the full compatible version for M1 Apple Silicon chips of Premiere Pro. Now that is really exciting for a lot of people. Um, I myself actually currently use Final Cut Pro right now, but I actually originally learned on Premiere Pro. And I know a lot of my friends who are hesitant in diving into the M1 Silicon chip because Premiere Pro hasn't been optimized for, for it just, just yet. So um, this release is actually really exciting. It's big news for a lot of people because I know the power of the M1 MacBooks. Um, or the M1 chips, and it's actually really good. You know, I, I think it's a good step forward for Apple. Now, just a little backstory. I actually started learning video editing on Adobe Premiere, and that's what I use for the first half of my career or so in the video industry. And I actually learned it on a 15-inch Intel-based MacBook Pro. Now, it wasn't fully loaded, or and it wasn't uh, spec out to any means, but it did get the job done, and it was good enough for just regular, basic HD video clips, because that's the highest quality that I had at the time, based off of the camera that I had. Now, when I started to get um, a little bit, a couple more clients, um, higher in video work, um, I started to run into a couple of issues. And so, with the 15 inch Intel based MacBook Pro using Adobe Premiere, I started to shoot in 4K, 24 frames a second. Nothing crazy, no, no log footage, no high bit rate. It was just basic Rec. 709 4K footage. And I just could not edit it in Adobe Premiere on Intel based MacBook Pro. And it was really frustrating because I was trying to turn over videos a little bit faster than what the workflow could really allow me, and it just wasn't working. And so that's when I actually started to experiment with um, Final Cut Pro. Now, even on a 15-inch Intel-based MacBook Pro, Final Cut Pro cut through the 4K footage and playback, pause, editing, layering, color grading, all that stuff very easily. And then um, I had a friend who actually let me borrow an M1 MacBook Pro. I threw in my external HD. I had uh, I was testing the Sony A7S III at the time, so I had some really nice 4K footage on hand, and I just wanted to test the M1 chip for the first time, and I was really blown away, as a lot of people were across the internet. They were really excited about the speed and the quality of the M1 Apple Silicon chip because it was just cutting through everything that they could throw at it um, with Final Cut Pro specifically because it was optimized. And there's a really good reason to stay with that program um, if you're on Apple because I, I would still highly recommend it. I still use it currently now, like I mentioned. But Adobe Premiere, that's where I, what I originally learned on and so it's kind of nice to, to think that I can use it if I really need to. Maybe I'm working with, um, another, with another editor, you know, and we want to tag team on some editing clips and he uses uh, Adobe Premiere, but I primarily use Final Cut. So I want to be able to be versed in each of the programs um, enough so that I can do professional work and work with other people as well. And so this is really exciting that Adobe finally came out with the M1 full compatible version of it just a couple days ago. So I think uh, I, I heard about the story yesterday and it was released on July 19th, I believe is what the article was. And so it, it's really exciting. Now, this is really not gonna be a full review of everything. This is really just gonna be my first impressions because I literally just updated uh, Adobe Premiere on my M1 MacBook Pro um, since I upgraded to the M1 chip versus the Intel-based chip. And so this is really just gonna be a first impressions of um, some of my footage that I have. I did some test footage um, and we'll take a look and dive into it a little bit deeper on my computer. But it's gonna be really exciting because if if what I hope is going to be happening with uh, this, this uh, speed test and some of the quality, like if it can play back simple um, S Cine Tone 4K footage from my uh, Sony FX3, that's going to be really exciting because that couldn't happen on an M1 chip um, with the beta version of the uh, of Adobe Premiere. And it wouldn't work with the Rosetta um, emulation tool with Adobe Premiere before the beta version. And so it just wasn't it just wasn't working. So if it does work and it does play back well here, then that's gonna be really exciting. And that can hopefully update to newer versions that can handle a lot of bigger codexes. So I do have some bigger codexes stuff. I've got uh, one clip that is ProRes RAW um, from my Sony uh, FX3, which was externally recorded. And so we're gonna be testing that as well because that's gonna be a very large file. So we're gonna see how it handles. So let's go ahead and dive into my computer right now and see where we're at with these first impressions of the Adobe Premiere 4 M1 
Apple Silicon. All right, um, as you can see here, I just have my desktop here. Um, I am recording this and disregard all of my files here, but uh, we've got Final Cut Pro, and I'm just gonna do a quick test here starting up Premiere Pro here in a little bit, but I wanna make sure that there's nothing else running in the background just to give it a fair fight. So I've got Final Cut Pro um, right here. Then we have Finder, obviously, which is always running, and then Notes because it's got some of my notes for this video that I'm just going back and forth with. So I'm gonna close that, and then let's go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. All right, there we go, starting back up. All right, and wasn't that bad. It was actually a pretty smooth um, startup. So let's go ahead and start off with a New library, so new. Um, <clears throat> and one premiere test. There we go. And put some footage really quick. And I've got four clips here. So this is Final Cut Pro right now, as you can see. Um, so I've got um, S Cine Tone 4K 24 frames, S Cine Tone 4K 24. S log 3 and max bitrate, and then we've got 4K 60 frames, S log 3 and max bitrate. Then we've got a ProRes RAW um, file right here in 4K. So let's go ahead and set up um, the project here. I just want to change where it's going to be saved. <coughs> for me. All right. And we'll import uh, the same files into this. And so I just labeled it as my camera that I've got here and we've got the same files here. So um, let's just go ahead and set up this project. And I just want to show you the difference between Final Cut Pro as it plays back in these three, uh, these four video clips, and then I want to show you, show it to you in Premiere Pro, just to see the difference. Because I know everything's gonna be fine in Final Cut because I've edited video, um, video files like these, very similar ones, and it, they cut, cut through everything very smoothly. So I didn't have any hiccups or issues, and just regular playback. Now I will be doing just some soft editing here, just some color correction back to Rec 709 on those S Log 3. Um, video files and then uh, just playing around with the Pro as a raw, but I just want to see how How just simple it can do it because I'm not looking to do anything crazy with uh, Premiere Pro just yet, so Let's go ahead and set up this timeline uh, All that is gonna go Cool We'll drop that in here I'll go ahead and mute this <clears throat> and looks like playback in Destiny Tone is really good. No hiccups. Everything's good. Cool. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Now it's been a while since I've used Premiere Pro because, like I said, I, I quit using it. Um, actually, so it's been like almost a year now that I haven't even used it or even touched it for that matter. So let's go ahead and let's just drop this in here. Boom. All right, so we've got just a basic timeline set up here. Um, looks like a couple things are a little bit different than what I remember them being. But you know what, let's just go ahead and play it and see what happens. It's looking really good so far. Yeah, looks like it's pretty smooth. Now let's go ahead and start dropping in some of this other, these other video clips. I'm just gonna make this timeline a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna drop these two in. I'm gonna keep the ProRes raw out for a little bit so we've got yeah it looks like everything is still going smooth here with the s log 3 nothing is just dropped in i haven't done anything with it just yet here, let's go with the 60 frames i'll go ahead and change this to um, regular 24 frames so i'm not sure if you knew that but if you have a timeline that is in a 23.98 or 24 frames a second in final cut pro and you drop a 60 frame uh per 60 frame clip in it'll still play at the faster rate but you can actually change it automatically 
by, by just clicking on it, going to your little time uh, frame here, and then going to automatic speed. It'll automatically change your 60 frames a second clip to where it should be, which on this timeline, it's going to be 23.98. And so it doesn't, I don't have to do the math to figure out that it's 40% slowed down. Um, it just automatically does it. So I really like this tool in Final Cut Pro. Now with Premiere, I have to go in there and have to do it manually. I have to type in 23.976 and it's kind of a mess. It was something that I never really enjoyed doing because uh, this is just a faster workflow, but let's go ahead and play it. Yep, it's slowed down, it looks good, no hiccups here. And this is all at the max bit rate. So this clip here and this clip here is at max bit rate. This was just in an eight bit. So these two are in 10 bit actually. And no hiccups in Final Cut Pro. As you can see, it's still rendering with the little dots there. So let's go ahead and drop in the same two clips here in Premiere. Now it might give me some issues with the, um, with the slowed down footage, but let's go and drop that one in. 60 frames here. All right. And let's see what happens. <clears throat> Ooh. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be going back and forth because I know here it does. So as you can see, we've got no hiccups here when it goes across, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that right now or not. So not saying that this is a bad thing, but it's just not doing anything right now. Let's do this. Let's grab it. for Premiere Pro to be playing. Now I'm gonna try to figure out how to slow this down about speed duration. So it looks like everything is playing so far so good. The scrubbing was a little tough, but the playback is, is what's really going. So no hiccups here, and no hiccups in the bar. Awesome, I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead over to this. So the play button actually takes um, a couple of seconds to actually start registering in. So um, I'd say about maybe a second to, uh, you know, two seconds maybe before it actually plays when I hit. Do you see that lag? So it's paused right now, and so I'm gonna hit the space bar. Okay, so that was a lot faster, so. A little bit slow for moving from one clip to the next clip, but no hiccups here so far. Yep, I'm happy with that, so that's really cool. And let's see if we can't drop in this ProRes RAW clip right in here. That's kind of a nice shot. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Let's go ahead and play this back. I'm gonna mute it. No, no hiccups here as to be expected, but let's go ahead and we dropped it in here. So let's go ahead and press the space bar and see if there's any lag. No lag, so that's good. And it is, oh, do, we are getting some lag here. Yeah, no hiccups there. So let's go ahead and start adding, adding in, adding, adding in some corrections here. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll use the camera LUT transform here um, that's just automatically baked in or built in to Final Cut Pro um, X. So I've got the Sony S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine. Turn that over to a Rec. 709 file and now we are, we're, we're good here. Um, let's see actually what's that, okay. And then you can adjust a little bit more. So let's go and do the same thing here. So let's go, go ahead over to this. Now this might take me a little while just because I haven't used Premiere Pro in a very long time. So let's see if I can't figure out how to get this back into just a Rec. 709 file. All right, and let's go ahead and play back. Oh, that was weird. There was a small glitch there. I'm not sure if you saw it. Let me go back just a little bit just to see if that happens. I'm sure you guys have seen it as well, so. <clears throat> okay, so let me go ahead and switch over to the 4K 60 frames a second. It's 
really windy where I live, so these flags just get torn up by the wind. And we go through quite a bit of them, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah. So it looks like there's another glitch there. That is so strange. So I'm not entirely sure where that is coming from and why that's happening, but it's the third time that I've seen a glitch. Um, let me see if it happens again. There's another glitch there, right there. And right here. So that's the fifth glitch that I've seen in the actual footage. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually going to be, um, if that's going to export out as that. It's probably not. This is probably just Premiere Pro rendering stuff and, and putting in transforms and turning stuff back to Rec. I'm like, it's probably just part of that, um, where that's coming from. So, not entirely sure where that is, but it's just a little weird. And then it's in the playback video here. And I've seen it multiple times already, as, as you may have seen it as well. But all in all, everything is still playing pretty smoothly. Let's go back to the ProRes RAW now. All right, well, I don't want to go into too much. Like I said, this is really just going to be a first impressions of, of, all, of all of it. So I have just updated it. I, the, only, the only other um, option, the only, sorry. The only other time that I actually started up Adobe Premiere was um, right after I loaded it because it had to load in all the other stuff that it does on the initial startup. So I had done that, but this, but other than that, I saw everything just as live as you guys did. Um, I did not take a look at this footage in any of these editing softwares beforehand, so I saw everything um, just as fresh as you guys are seeing it here. So, um, I, like I said, I still prefer Final Cut Pro, but uh, as you can see, I think the playback is is fine. You know, it's just as smooth. The scrubbing is a little bit um, it is a little bit choppy. It's actually really choppy. Um, you know, so I don't I don't think I would. I wouldn't want to use this footage to really cut down into, um, you know, like scrubbing through a lot of footage, um, maybe just a handful of clips, honestly. But, um, you know, with without scrubbing, I wouldn't be, you know, it would slow down the, the workflow. So um, that's kind of an issue. And then um, just some of these glitches that I'm seeing in just the picture. So it's kind of weird that I, I keep seeing it happening. Now, I haven't tried any of this in, uh, DaVinci Resolve, so I have used that uh, program as well, just a little bit, and so I, I would like to actually test that out um, with some of the same footage, so that might be the next video with Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, because I don't have it actually on my computer at all. Um, I don't have it loaded, I haven't used it in, in probably six months or so. Um, so I quit using Premiere Pro long ago, and then um, I used DaVinci just a little bit, um, and then, but I was pretty much exclusive to Final Cut Pro for a while, um, at least for all my professional um, projects and, and video clients. So, but all in all, I think it's a good improvement for Adobe Premiere. Now, obviously, everything's going to continue to get hashed out. With this, I know they had the beta back in December, so it's really been seven months that they've been um, getting down uh, into the the code and. It, and uh, all the stuff that needs to be changed with the program itself just so that it, it can be compatible with Apple M1 Silicon. But I'm really glad they got it out. Um, I, I heard good things about the beta version. I also did hear that the Rosetta version of Adobe Premiere, the emulation, was okay, but I, that was not my experience at all. Um, I tried it once and it, it just didn't work. And so I'm not sure where uh, how those guys were actually getting good quality um, you know, results and workflows and, and even export times with the emulation tool. But now it's on M1, it's on Silicon, so that is really exciting. So I really hope you, know, you guys like this video. Um, I'll probably finish this video out by exporting the what I've done here so far, just to see where it's at and see what the time uh, is gonna be. But um, uh, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you wanna see any other, other different tests. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.